So I have been using the Keith Titanium kettle for a number of months now, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, I want to thank Keith for sending me this kettle, as well as a number of other items that I previewed some months ago so that I could share them with you. So what I thought I'd do is I'd give you some close-ups of the kettle while I give you the specifications for it, and then I'll share my experiences with it. So it is a windy day out here in the woods and I'm hoping that I'm able to cover up my microphone enough so that you can hear me well enough. So uh, yeah, here is the titanium kettle from Keith. And uh, just before I put it down on the ground, there is the stuff sack that it comes in. Nice, simple, extra lightweight stuff sack. All right, so I'll give you some close-ups and I will give you the specifications as we do. So obviously the can kettle is made from uh, titanium, but it does have some silicone on the two top handles or grips, as well as the D-ring, the stand-up D-ring here. All very nice and uh, they have been very durable. I have had this over a wood fire, cleaned it off a little bit just for presentation purposes, of course, and I've been using it over alcohol and gas stoves as well. So the uh, sizes is it's 5.5 inches across, three and a half inches tall, which is 140 by 90 millimeters. It has a net weight of four 0.6 ounces and which is 130 grams and of course that is the single key feature that most people will focus in on is just how light this is especially since it has a capacity of one liter which is 33.8 fluid ounces yeah and and that's what you're paying for because of course you can buy cheaper kettles but not as durable or as light as this one is. All right, so a few of the features are, of course, as I mentioned, it does have the silicone handles on top and the silicone D-ring, all very nice when you have it over a fire or over a gas stove. It has a formed spout, which works very well. The lid sets in nicely and it does have one little vent on the, uh, uh, to let some of the steam out. It has this unique feature back here of these two extensions on the bail handles. And what they do, and they do quite effectively, is they allow you to tip the kettle forward. Now, at some point it may follow, but what happens is, especially if I can touch the D-ring, is the kettle or that pot, ha or the lid, this is less likely to fall out. So it doesn't lock it in so much as it just keeps it from falling off completely. So a nice little key feature. Okay, so. One other thing that I'll point out, and I pointed this out or mentioned this in the uh, opening or the preview video of it, and that is it appears to have a two-piece construction, meaning that, and do you know the heart of it? Look at this. I'm not so sure it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty convinced, unless Keith tells me otherwise, that this is a two-piece construction, meaning that the bottom piece is press fitted to the sides. Uh, what that does is it creates a small crevice down in the corners. Hopefully I'm able to give you some focus down there. A small crevice down in the corner. Now, I, I had mentioned that that can be a bad thing if you're cooking food in here, in that there's a crevice you're gonna have to try and clean out after use so you don't leave anything behind. One piece press fitted, rounded bottom kettles are nicer that way, uh, that there's less chance of leaving any food behind. But I started to think about that since I mentioned it, and, and I'm not so sure it's as big an issue as uh, I had made it out to be. And the reason I say that is I started to think about what do I actually do with this kettle? Well, I boil water in it. That's what it's about, right? A boil water in this. Now, I have, as I said before, and I do on occasion, hard boil eggs in this. But that's about all. That's about all I'm doing with these kettles, at the most hard boiled eggs as far as cooking food goes. So if you're not cooking food like stews or soups or something else in there, the chances of you actually leaving food residue in that crevice is pretty remote. Now, I suppose if you're making cowboy coffee and you don't clean it out as well as you could afterwards, you could leave a little bit of coffee down in those crevices. But from the aficiendos, those who love their cowboy coffee, they'll say, that's just seasoning. That just adds flavor to the next pot. So again, how much of an issue is it actually? It's certainly not a deal breaker. Uh, I think, you know, I don't mind that at all, especially since it has all the other features such as the incredibly lightweight. And remember just how durable titanium is. 
so durable indeed. Now, there's one other feature that I discovered about this that um, it's not something I'm going to use today, but I'll show you the way that I transport these two things together. So in that preview video, I had also shown showing the Keith Titanium pour over, a really clever coffee maker. Very expensive, mind you, but still very nice. And I will be reviewing this shortly. But what I discovered for transport purposes is that it just sits down inside. Now, not perfectly. I've just got to get the little piece of zipper piece out here. Uh, not perfectly, but when it's inside the stuff sack, then it's just fine. It doesn't come loose. So it is just the right diameter for putting that down inside. And uh, yeah, so if you're making coffee and you want to use your Keith Titanium kettle along with your Keith Titanium pour over, then you know you can transport them together. Okay, so my experiences have been that this is ultra lightweight. The opening is fairly wide or to the diameter of the entire pot, similar to what you might get in the GSI stainless steel catalyst. And what I like about that means it's so easy to get inside if you do want to clean it out or if you just want to stuff things in there like your fire kit and your coffee, whatever else, it's easy to get inside. If it had a smaller diameter, of course, it would be a little bit harder. All right, so there's not a lot to show or say about the kettle. I can say that I have been using it on a regular basis. And if I'm going out for just a quick coffee and a very lightweight a shoulder bag worth of gear, this is the kettle I grab for obvious reasons. Okay, just a quick review of the Keith Titanium kettle. And I said it when I first reviewed this or previewed it here at this spot a few months ago, that this was just sweet, just a sweet little kettle, something I knew I'd be using a lot. And I am, it truly is. It's, you know, I, I don't take it out so much for putting over a fire, I have, and but more often than not, I'll, it's for putting over an alcohol stove, something equally lightweight to, to match it together. I'm certainly not afraid to put this over fire. I have in the past and I will in the future. It's just that, you know, I have bigger stainless steel pots for doing that with and uh, not that I intend on keeping this pristine clean, but uh, it's clean now, so why get it dirty, I guess. It's just a nice kettle for going ultra lightweight, which is what it's all about. All right, uh, I'll give you the information I have in terms of the specifications and the link where you can purchase this kettle at the Keith Titanium USA website. But if you have any questions or any comments on this item, then please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.